So let's learn how to use object-oriented programming called OOP. And that's the whole purpose of us learning C Sharp in Visual Studio. It's because we want to use a programming language in an OOP environment. Now the whole purpose of us using object-oriented programming is so that we can mimic real-world objects with source code. Now you might say to yourself, what does that mean? Well, maybe we could use some source code to represent a student, or a, or a class, a course, or a computer, or a car, or an airplane, or a road, a book. In other words, everything we do every day in our life is mimicked, or we interact with it through an object, whether it's a TV, or a phone, or a picture. Everything is an object in our life. And we try to use source code to make a blueprint for those things. The blueprint or the mold to make that item is called a class. And what you do is you use that class to instantiate or construct the object you want to make. I could have a student class and then I could go make an object from that source code that would represent a student. Now I know that this sounds a little confusing and we're going to see it uh, how we use it in, in a little bit in source code but in the videos I've made before you've already used objects and you might not have even known it. When you said random and you created a variable of data type random equals new random parenthesis parenthesis. That was the random class, the random blueprint, the random mold that somebody wrote and it allowed you to create a random object. You stored that object or the reference to that object inside the variable, whatever you called it. Now that you have that reference to the random object created using the random class, you can now do all the stuff that somebody already wrote inside of the class. In other words, somebody created a class, put all the source code out there for you, that allowed it to do certain things, functionality, random numbers, things like that. And you don't have to go rewrite that code. All you have to do is create an object from that class and then just start using it. So that's going to save you a ton of time in getting your work done. So let's go ahead and we'll make a class ourselves. And we're going to go ahead and work with that class. In fact, you've been working with classes already and you might not have known it. When you create string variables, that's a class. Arrays from a class. Well, in other words, we're making objects that we're going to work with and they come from a class, the string class, the array class. So let's go ahead and make our brand new class, our own class. And we want to do that by starting a new Visual Studio program. We'll say File, New, and we'll do a new project. And I probably should just do control shift down and that would save us a lot of time in the videos. And we'll do a visual C sharp console application. And we'll just call it oop fun. And you can call it whatever you want. I'll click OK. It's going to create our brand new solution and our project for us. And then we're going to be able to start typing in our code. So if you notice when that code comes up, all the code you work with in C Sharp is already inside of a class. And we have that main word inside of the class. And you remember main said it tells the computer this is where you start. This is called a method. It's like a function you'd use in Excel, average, or sum. In other words, it's something that gets called or invoked so you can start running your program. And main is very special. And we're going to learn what this whole thing means later on in some of the other videos. So here's our class. I want to make a brand new class. And I can put more than one class in one file if I want to. Uh, the easy way to do this is simply coming over to your Solution Explorer. And we can create our class through it. Now remember, a class is just a template or a mold that allows us to create objects. I could come in here and say class student and create a brand new class inside of this namespace 
and inside of this file the program CS and I could have multiple classes in there and that's great to do but the recommendation that we like to use is that we create a brand new class in its own file and the way you do that is you come to your project in my case it's called OopFun right mouse click on it and choose add class right mouse click the project add then it's going to bring this screen up and you can give it a name. We're going to call it student.cs, CS for T-Sharp. And notice the class is selected right there. Click Add. Creates a brand new file for us called Class Student. Now the whole purpose of this class is to allow us to mimic students in the real world. So tell me, well I guess you can't tell me because it's a video, but think to yourself, what could you make that would describe a student. What could you have that describes a student? Well, a student could have a name. A student could have an age. A student could have a gender. A student could have a GPA. There's a whole bunch of different things that a student could have. These are called instance variables or another word is attributes, and another word is properties. They describe the object you're going to make. They have information about the object you're going to make. In other words, when we go to create an object from the student class, that object is going to have these descriptors that we can store information in. They're going to describe or have information about that object. It might be a name that's different or a GPA. Anything that you use to describe is made as an instance variable, just like you would any other variable. It's just that these variables belong in a class. Now, within the variables themselves, you can give them what they call an access modifier. Remember, every variable has scope and duration. Scope says, where can you see it? Duration says how long does it live before the garbage collector comes and gets it. The scope determines where the variable can be used in the program. And there's different types of scope in C Sharp that you can work with for instance variables inside your class. There's different types of access modifiers we can use. And remember that access modifier controls the scope of where something can be seen in your program. And what I mean by that is, assume that you made a while loop. And inside that while loop, you created a variable within the, the brackets. That variable would only live until the while loop is over. And you've seen that in other programs or other videos that I've posted out there. We're going to talk about three scopes within uh, the, the limitations of this course. The first one we're going to talk about is public. Public says... This access variable, this access modifier, this instance variable can be seen anywhere in the program. It's public, so anyone can see it, anybody can change it, anyone can access it. Now, publics are great to use. They're the most common one we use. It means there's no restriction on the accessibility of it. We can see it in this class. We can see it outside of the class. We can see it in another class. Great to use, easy to use. The bad thing is they're harder to maintain. Imagine that our instance variables were children. And we said, this child called name is public. That means that child can go anywhere without restrictions. That's great. That's lots of freedom. But let's say that you gave that child $5. In fact, we'll say it's an int value or a currency or whatever you want. You gave it a value, and then later on in the program, 10,000 lines later, that value had changed. You gave that instance variable child $5. They put it in their variable pocket. They went and played in the C-sharp world, going to all the different classes, all the different programs. And then by the time you need it again, its value has changed. Where do you have to go look to see where that value had changed? You've got to look everywhere. So maintaining a public instance variable, a public child, is difficult because you don't really have control over it. 
and they can do, be modified or changed anywhere. Another one is called private. Private says you can only see this instance variable if you're inside of this class. This private child only plays in its yard. It doesn't go outside of its yard. It's really, really obedient. Now, the great thing about this, if that child had $5 in their pocket and they lost it, where do you have to look? You only have to look in your yard. The public child, you have to look in the whole city. You got to look in the neighbor's yard, the other city. You got to look everywhere. But a private child is easier to maintain. If it ever changes, you only have to look within your class. However, if you ever want to use this somewhere else, now it's really difficult because it just wants to stay in its yard. And so you're going to learn later on that there's ways that we can give it permission to go to other yards, to go to other classes and work. For now, we're just going to use public so that everybody can see it. And so there's our public instance variables. We have four of them, and they are what will describe the object when we create this student variable. So let's see, how do we do that? Well, let's come back over to your program.cs file. That's our main program. If we were going to create a variable that was an integer variable, you'd say int, I count, and you could give it a value. And then you could use that variable later on. So the first thing when creating a variable is you specify the data type. A class name acts like a data type. Remember that you said in other videos, random. O rand equals new random. And then you could start using that random object, o rand dot next. And that would return a value between 0 to 100. And you could assign it to that variable. Well, I want to use that new student class I created. So you specify the word student, space, give it a name. I'm going to call it ostud, equals new, and then you say the class name again, parenthesis, parenthesis. That variable, olstud, now has an object inside of it of type student. In other words, when we said the word new, C Sharp jumped out to the class and said, hey, we need to create a brand new variable that looks like that. And so that variable now has access or positions in it to store a name, an age, a gender, and a GPA. I could just like an array. So I could came I came back over to here and I said, oh stude dot name equals Mickey. Oh stude dot age equals fifty. Oh stude dot gender equals M for mouse and ostude dot GPA equals 4.0. That one variable that I created called ostude, based upon that class called student, now acts almost like an array where you can store a whole bunch of different things in it and you access it through the one variable. I can even print those off now if I wanted by saying console.writeline ostude.name. I'm going to go ahead and do a console.readline just to pause the screen. And so I could run this, and we should see Mickey print out on the screen. So we'll go ahead and run that. It compiles it and then it executes it, and then we're going to see it show up in the console window, and then wait for us to press a key. There's the console window, there's the word Mickey, it waits for us to press a key. Now let me show you one more thing that you can do with this. Let's see what really happens in the computer. I'm going to set a break by clicking on line 16, and then I'm going to run it through the start debugging, debug, start or F5. It's waiting for me to now create the variable. Click, mouse, and choose watch. 
So it now makes a variable out there so I can watch and see what happens to it. Right now, it's waiting for us to execute line 16. Look at the value of the variable, null. And that's because there's nothing in it yet. It hasn't been created. Let's go ahead and click the little step over, F10. Now it's alive. When you take a look at it now and click on the arrow, it shows all the different attributes associated with that one object. Now what's the beauty of this? Let's say that I had a program and I wanted to keep track of all the students in the class, in the course, and there were 50 students. And there's four different pieces of information for each student I want to keep track of. I would have to go create 200 variables to keep track of all the students in that course. Where instead, if I just made an object, that eliminates or reduces the number of variables I want to store. Take a look at the next video that follows this one, and you'll see how we can make an array of student objects.